when we've been looking at you know broad challenges around infrastructure and the like in Africa, a figure that's often bandied about is 13 percent which is the cost incurred by any company that wants to freight their goods one way or another through Africa because the infrastructure is so bad. So you should be doing fairly well in Africa then. Well, Africa is a growing economy and uh, we've been here for 36 plus years and yes, we're doing very well. Um, that said, you know, there's always opportunity to do an awful lot better and uh, to your point around infrastructure, look, it, it's probably a little bit unfair to suggest the infrastructure across sub-Saharan Africa is mm. difficult in every single country because I think it varies greatly mm. whether you look at West Africa, East Africa, mm. North or South. But clearly there's opportunity for improvement and we work at DHL, we work very hard uh, with the local authorities to do just that in, and in fact only today one of my managers was with the Minister of Customs in Zambia talking about exactly how we can improve their import and export process. I suppose the big thing that's changed over the last 30 odd years is where it used to be very much DHL driving that change. Now the authorities and the regulatory bodies are coming to us and asking us how we can help them become best in class. How do you overcome the infrastructure challenges? Because you may capitalize on the weakness, but you definitely must be impacted by them. I'm talking about road networks, airport facilities, rail. Yeah, it, look, it's, and again, it, it is difficult. It's not uh, a, a mature economy, so we definitely have our challenges. Um, but a couple of things, really. One, you know, 42 years ago or so, when we first started the express industry, we worked very hard to develop uh, the express, the international express industry. And today that's the same. So we work uh, very hard with the local authorities to ensure that we help them develop best in class uh, processes and systems. And at the same time, we have uh, established a very strong foundation in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. So I think it's different for different logistics companies, but for DHL, we have a pretty good platform through right. 17 dedicated DHL aircraft, uh, five world-class facility hubs, facilities, we have a good right. platform in order to circumnavigate the difficulties of a, a developing economy. Rising oil prices impacted significantly on um, the airline industry in particular and you know many of them didn't have very sound hedging strategies certainly 18 months ago that was the yeah. case. In terms of how you operate because the express component relies extensively on air. When you deal with volatile oil prices, rising fuel prices, how does that impact your bottom line but your operations? Well, rightly or wrongly, um, for us the fuel surcharge or the increasing fuel is just passed on directly to our customers. So it's a, a left pocket, right pocket movement. We don't, um, we don't obviously lose or make on the fuel pricing. I think the bigger impact is actually on the economy so, or the markets that we work in. So you tend to get three types of customers that react differently depending on how the fuel moves. So you get one group of customers who don't do anything different. They carry on shipping and m managing their supply chain in the same way as they were when prices were lower. You get a second bucket of customers that look for different modes of, sh of transportation. So rather than necessarily sending an express, moving it to a, a freight environment. And then the third customer ships less. And, th and that's probably the one that's most concerning. And again, we, we work very, very closely with our customers mm. to try and find alternate solutions to how they may ship. And again, through DHL, you have that. We have that ability mm. to be able to offer all modes of transportation so we can through supply chain dialogue, right. move customers' shipments from express to, to a deferred mode if need be. Obviously, uh, couriers have been getting a bit of negative press uh, recently, largely around security issues. You know, you remember about a year ago, the uh, plane that was grounded due to what was assumed to be a possible bomb on its way to Chicago. And there was just a sense that this is the one aspect of the airline uh, business, freighting business, that had a few loopholes within. How are you impacted and how do you deal with security threats for the packages that you carry? Yeah, we, we live in a, a particularly dynamic world, unfortunately, and, and things like this come and go. A um, couple of points. One is I wouldn't disclose how DHL operates from a security perspective. That would be uh, not very sensible. Um, but you can be, and your viewers can be very assured 
uh, Loratu, that we work very closely with the uh, authorities, both globally and in country, to ensure that our security policies and processes are completely up to scratch and aligned with what they're trying to do. And in fact, in many cases, in similar to sort of governance around customs, mm -hmm. we work with those bodies to actually develop better protocols going forward. Uh, and again, just one simple example for Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, 16 of our key markets, uh, key, key areas, key facilities are TAPA certified. Uh, and for those that are less knowledgeable about our industry than myself perhaps, TAPA is uh, a, a, an accredited body that will audit the facility to ensure it meets very stringent security standards. Again, which I won't go into detail, mm. but uh, we, we certainly enforce those as best we can across all of our markets. So it's something we take very, very seriously. Right. We can clearly understand the implications right. of uh, security risk or security processes. And as I said before, we work very closely right. with the governing bodies to ensure we're completely compliant. Commercial growth for DHL Express on the African continent, absolutely our economies are growing above 5% on average. We're seeing more inter-regional trade uh, and we're seeing a growing middle class mean that we're demanding more goods from abroad coming to the African consumer. So at these various tiers, the macro in terms of trade and the micro in terms of the individual, what are you doing to ensure that your business is um, competitive and commercially viable as you grow with Africa growing as well? Yeah, we, as you quite rightly pointed out, I think the IMF have indicated that Sub-Saharan Africa's GDP should grow at 5.5% uh, this year and 5.8% next year. So I think it's the second fastest growing economy behind Asia, or at least that's the forecasted growth rates for Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, we clearly want to be a big part of that. It's real simple stuff. Uh, we focus on service quality, so making sure our service is absolutely top-notch. That requires investments in planes, facilities, vehicles, uh, motivated and engaged people, so making sure our people are really uh, part of our business and, and investing in their skill sets and making sure they really differentiate at the customer touch point. And then thirdly, making sure we keep our customers. You can't possibly grow if you're losing customers. So keep our customers and uh, all things will be good.